Greetings, fellow explorers. I'm Caitlin Steakley, your guide on the thrilling expedition we call Wish You Were Here. Prepare yourselves for the upcoming adventure where we'll delve into the enchanting world of a game board lounge, get a taste of exceptional barbecue, and traverse the rugged woodlands of Triple C Ranch. Get ready for an endless cascade of excitement through the wonders of Tennessee's Upper Cumberland, exclusively on Wish You Were Here. This program was made possible by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Wish You Were Here, produced under an agreement with the Upper Cumberland Development District and made possible in part through support from the Tennessee Tech University Center for Rural Innovation and the Tennessee Department of Tourist Development. In the heart of Tennessee, there's a little slice of heaven you've just got to see. Oh man, wish you were here. Welcome to Wish You Were Here. Adventures in Tennessee's Upper Cumberland. I'm Caitlin Steakley, your guide on this journey as we dive into the captivating nature and unique culture of this stunning region. Together, we'll unveil hidden gems, witness stunning landscapes, and savor remarkable encounters that define the charm of the Upper Cumberland. Before we meet with our Wish You Were Here field correspondents, let's have a little adventure of our own right here in downtown Smithville. The Harvester, an unrivaled gym takes center stage as a venue for an exceptional musical experience. The Harvester, a premier event center, welcomes visitors to explore Smithville's musical legacy. As night falls, the Harvester comes alive, welcoming guests into its sleek and captivating embrace. Today, we're in downtown Smithville, Tennessee at the Harvester Event Center with owner Burt Driver. Burt, thank you so much for having us today. It's a pleasure to be with y'all and get to talk about the Upper Cumberland. So I'm gonna say cheers and welcome to the historic Harvester in downtown Smithville, Tennessee. Tell us a little bit about this amazing building we're in and what you guys offer here at the Harvester. So it was a tractor dealership for many decades. It became a bank processing center for our neighbors over here, first bank on the corner. Uh, it sat for, um, for a few months and a few years went by, so we grabbed it in 2017. It was a bit of a head scratcher the way it was all chopped up, but along the way found a great designer. It's a mid-century modern. Um, it's over 6,000 square feet. Those doors roll up. This is called the International Hall, this section of it. Hence the name International Tractor Dealership, right? Gotcha. So tried to roll that in. Yep. And those doors roll up to the Midtown patio Right, that's downtown Smithville and that's West Main, so you're in Midtown. You're in Midtown. Yes. <laughs> I love uh, it. Uh, the, uh, you are Midtown. That's it. This We're, is Midtown. The block of it is right here. <laughs> now, why did you choose Smithville? Grew up here, born and bred, um, up until about 18. Um, worked on a nursery, lived outside of town, went to high school here, loved the town, multiple generations. My children are probably the eighth generation to be in this county. But just like all young people, I left for a long time and decided to come back and um, got a business going on the edge of town called Burt Driver Nursery. Mm -hmm. And a few years ago, we opened up the Burlap Room, which is a beer garden with live music. Gave us a springboard and a little bit of confidence to do some more live music in this facility, this venue. And I live here. I want to see this area grow. I don't want to drive very far. <laughs> so all those things kind of came into play that we get to show off what a cool vibe is here. It's a local vibe that's radiating from it and people gravitate towards it. We have the amenities and beautiful Center Hill Lake and uh, come on y'all, invest in Smithville. <laughs> it's so easy to get to. The nursery is an actual nursery. It's not just another event venue, correct? Correct, and uh, it's a drive-in movie theater. The cab drive-in movie theater opened in 1956, closed in the mid 90s. We opened in, believe it or not, 1997. 
So it's been a bit of a blur. Yeah. We're sitting in one of the one of the rooms in this venue, but we're gonna venture into other areas mm -hmm. soon. And there's some really cool pieces in the other room. I want you to tell us the story about the chandelier that's in the large uh, above the stage. Oh yeah, yeah, right, right. So old time friends that have Lake Property owned the Knoll Hotel in Nashville that was opened in the 20s. It's a great story right at the end of the Depression era. They stayed open. So the Knoll Hotel and the Knoll parking lot were like the 4th Avenue, 5th Avenue area of Nashville. Three brass chandeliers hung in their lobby. They harvested the chandeliers. Mm -hmm. So there's one in the greenhouse at the burlap room. It's called the Solstice Stage. It's the backdrop for a lot of shows. Well, it's lovely. Thank you. Um, I'm so excited to explore. I really appreciate you telling us about all the things that the Harvester has to offer. Thank you again so much for having us. All righty. Thanks for coming. The Harvester becomes not just a venue, but a symphony of moments woven together in harmony, waiting for its audience to join in. Few experiences match the joy of gathering around a game table with loved ones. It's a chance to bond and partake in some good-natured competition. Field correspondent Shan Stout embarked on a journey to Cookville's historic west side to discover an extraordinary board game lounge called The Table. We invite you to embark on a journey through over 600 games where stories unfold and laughter is the soundtrack forge alliances, unravel mysteries, and claim victory. For the table is not just a place, it's an adventure waiting to unfold. Now, if you're ready to have some real family fun, I've got the place for you. I'm here in the beautiful historic west side of Cookville, Tennessee on Spring Street at the Table Board Game Lounge with co-owner Mark Davis. Hi, Mark. Hello, and welcome to the Table Board Game Lounge. Now, I'm so glad to be here today. Now, this is a kind of a nostalgic uh, throwback to days gone by because board games have uh, had a big resurgence in the past recent years. And you guys have the answer for people who are looking to spend some time playing games together. For me, I grew up on Life and Monopoly and all the Hasbro games, right? I just thought that's what board games were, Battleship but there's a world uh, of board games that my sons uh, actually introduced our whole family to. And for us getting together on the holidays, we have a lot of board games on our shelves that people probably wouldn't even know existed. But when I see my family, I have seven children, when I have all those kids sitting at a table with their mom and I, and we're playing a board game, just, sit to, just to sit back and watch the interaction, the connection, the laughing, the competition. When you see those things happen with siblings and with parents, it's, it just does something for you. So when Joe approached me with the idea of, hey, do you think we could do this? I'm like, man, I'm all in. Now let's talk about what you have here. Mm -hmm. How many games? There's, I, I'm told there's over 600, is that right? That is correct. There's 600 plus games. So we have card games to board games. Uh, we have simple, medium, and complex games. We have role-playing games. We have tabletop games. And we have all kinds of games that meet all kinds of needs. Now, pretend that I'm one of the visitors that have been here for the very first time. I've walked through your door. Uh, I'm an individual and I do not have a, a partner to play with. Do you have something that I can do? Sure. So what we'll do is if there's a group of people here, we'll ask for permission for you to join maybe their game so that you get to meet new oh, people. And making you get new connect, friends. I love it. Connect with new people. That's our whole mission. We want people to connect with people. We want families to connect with each other and we want people to connect with each other in the community. Now, if you come in and there's not anybody here at that time, or you're like, man, I don't want to play with maybe particular, that particular group of people, the staff will play with you. Okay, now we were talking about how this is great for connection. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah. unpack that a little bit. Sure, I believe that from COVID and technology that we have figured out how to decentralize ourselves from one another. We're disconnected. We are disconnected. And so I believe that we are made to be accepted with, by one another. I think God made us that way. I think we are meant to be together as people. We desire heavily that people sit across the table from one another, be able to look in each other's eyes and talk, communicate. And let's stop all the divisiveness that's going on in the country. Let's just get together and be together and just be people. Well, I can't wait to spend a little bit of time here today and take it easy on me, Mark. <laughs>
I am a novice. We are, listen, we are very gracious and we want you to win. We want you to have a winning experience. As Shan, a valiant adventurer, strides forth into the uncharted lands of the west side of Cookville, a new role emerges for her. She has chosen to don the mantle of the Dungeon Master, charting the course for the epic tale that is about to unfold. Roll for initiative. Abandon the world's distractions and embrace the magic within, here at the table where adventures never end. A culinary journey from chef to food truck to restaurant owner has cemented one business as a destination for fantastic barbecue and an unforgettable atmosphere. Field correspondent Matt Beal traveled to Main Street, McMinnville, Tennessee to discover the exceptional offering at Collins River Barbecue. Collins River Barbecue. It's not just a place to eat, it's a gathering spot where friends come together to enjoy great food and great company. From tender ribs to sizzling pulled pork, each dish is crafted with care and passion. Hello and welcome to beautiful and picturesque downtown McMinnville, Tennessee. Today I have the pleasure of being at Collins River Barbecue and Cafe, and I'm joined today by co-owners Joe and Hannah O'Neill. Joe, Hannah, thanks so much for having us in this morning. Thank you. Thanks. So tell us about this space. First of all, it's warm, it's inviting. I feel very at home here. How did it get started? What was the inspiration to begin a barbecue and, and cafe? Went to culinary school in Walter State, uh, which is in East Tennessee. Did that for a little bit. Worked at Calhoun's in Gatlinburg for two years. Came back after I graduated Worked at City Cafe, which was a little building downtown on Main Street. It actually burnt a few years ago. Uh, started catering in 2009 with a Toyota 4Runner, a pop-up uh, tent, and a smoker on a trailer. Tell me about the environment that you've cultivated here. What is What can people expect when they come in? Uh, we've got ribs, baby back ribs. We've got brisket, pulled pork, smoked wings. We've got smoked turkey, local salad mix, local tomatoes, uh, local beers. But you look to locally source. Yes. yes. And that's food and drink, yes? It is. Yes. Well, it's some of the local drink we can have uh, here. Calf Killer is our main beer provider. They're out of Sparta, Tennessee. We also have um, Red Silo a lot. Red we Silo. keep them out of Cookville. Um, uh, we try to keep all Tennessee brewed beer, but you know, sometimes we venture out um, depending on what our customers want. But um, we have usually anywhere from 12 to 14 different beers on tap at all times. So okay. a big, big variety. Sounds like it. And it's good to leave home every once in a while, but mm -hmm. to also know where you come from. Yeah. Now take me back to the menu because I love food and I love barbecue. If I'm here for the first time, what are some of your local fan favorites or some of your must tries if I'm coming for the first time? I've got the loaded barbecue nacho. We cook our own tortilla chips in the fryer. They're fresh tortilla chips, hand pulled pork. We do a white queso cheese, which is really good. And then we also do a brisket burn in. And then we do a baby back ribs, which is like our, like our go-to seller. So. Now did you say brisket burn in? Brisket burn in. Walk me through It's what the that top means. part of the brisket. It's a little bit fattier than like the regular brisket, but we smoke it. Then we cut it up into pieces, smoke it again, put sauce on it, and then serve it. You are making me hungry. It's like beef candy. You. So that's what a lot of people call it. It's beef candy. Beef candy. Yeah. <laughs> Sign me up. But it's an entree, not a dessert. It is an entree. It's a, it's a special. We don't have it on the menu all the time. We do it on the weekends. Well, I'm glad I've arrived on a special yes. day when we've got brisket burning. That the burnings are just for you today. Now, for folks visiting the area, what's right here around us that they might also experience and make Collins River part of their day? We get a lot of our visitors from places like Cumberland Caverns, um, you know, the largest show cave um, in Tennessee. So we also have Rock Island State Park, um, beautiful park. Um, you can hike or fish or kayak and um, come eat lunch with us after or dinner after. Um, we really enjoy serving our community and, and people. Yeah. Sounds like it's very easy to make yourself at home here. Well, thank you so much for having me in, and I'm looking real forward to tasting some of these delicious dishes. Yes. Thank you. Indulge in the vibrant ambiance that is Collins River Barbecue. Your taste buds will thank you.
Whether you're an angler or a hunter seeking a serene retreat into nature, or simply looking for a getaway in the wilderness, Triple C Ranch is the ultimate escape. Field correspondent Shan Stout journeyed to Monterey to discover the rugged wonder and tranquility of Triple C Ranch. Here in the heart of nature lies a ranch like no other where adventure and relaxation come together in perfect harmony. Offering hunting, fishing, and newly updated ranch style lodges, it's a haven where guests can feel at home amidst the natural beauty of Tennessee. Now we are out in beautiful nature. Now it looks like we are miles from nowhere with all of the scenery around but we're actually just minutes from Monterey, Tennessee in their downtown. So we just zipped on up here to Triple C Ranch and I am here with owner Jason Cantrell. Hi, Jason. Hey, welcome to Triple C Ranch. Glad to have you. Listen, we're so excited to be here today. Just driving in, we passed by the beautiful ponds, the majestic fencing. I mean, it goes for miles and miles, it seems. Now tell us a little bit about Triple C and what our viewers can expect when they arrive here. It's a kind of ranch and that's what I bought it for. And then uh, later on I thought, well, I'd like to get the lake and the land to help you know, bring in some revenue. So I want to open it up to the public to come in to hunt, fish, hike, ride uh, side by side. I've got side by side rentals, pontoon rentals. And I'm gonna have it you know, where they can come and just get away from everything. So one of my questions is, so you come out here and you want to potentially stay a few days. Is there a place to lodge? We do. We have uh, the ranch house, it's a two bedroom, a two bath house. And then we got the bunk house, it's a four bedroom and two bath house. So uh, you can come and stay and just walk the road or trails or horseback ride or hunt, fish, you know, waterfowl hunt, whatever you want. Now. If we don't want to stay, you just want to come out and maybe you live nearby, but you want to visit the ranch, uh, you have day passes available. I do. This year, actually, we started doing day passes. That way you can come and just, you know, the fish, or if you just want to come and uh, horseback ride. So we're going to start with hunting. You okay. have multiple hunting opportunities for many seasons. You even have blinds already set up on the property. Yes, we've got trails, uh, built trails to the the hunting houses that we built, and then we bought hunting houses, and uh, we've got two man ladder stands. You know, when you come out here, you can just uh, come and enjoy, and relax. We've done all the work for you. What about our anglers? There are beautiful ponds. You said 16 ponds across this property? Oh, they are, yeah. <laughs> and then it's a 60 acre lake. The lake's been built for 40 to 50 years. I've had the companies come in and, uh, you know, shock and do testing, see what I need to do and improve on. I've fertilized. I've added more bait fish, build a dock. When you come, you can catch a lot of fish and big fish. I love that because for inexperienced uh, fisher people like myself, <laughs> I need to be able to have an opportunity to have a chance at catching more fish. Uh, I think that this is a wonderful place for all ages. You said you have people that even come here to celebrate their anniversary and they just want to walk the grounds and experience nature. Oh, it is just to get away. I've got a couple coming next week for their I believe the 30th wedding anniversary. And they're just wanting to stay in one of the houses and just hack the property, just now, get away. You have an all-inclusive opportunity here. Oh, it is. Um, what you need to know is you can rent a pontoon boat that is already in the water. You can also rent ATVs side-by-sides. Yeah. There's horseback riding. They are, you can bring your own horses. And uh, we got like over 10 miles of uh, trails here to ride. You know, and then uh, plus the roads on the property here. And it just, you know, just get away from everything. Well, this is a wonderful, wonderful piece of property. Jason, what I love about this, this is a wonderful rural experience. And we have Muddy Pond just down the road, which is the Amish Mennonite community and all the wonderful things to do there. We're moments away from downtown Monterey, Tennessee with the shopping and the small town charm. So you're getting that really rural country life experience that you're wanting while you're here. So you'll want to plan your visit to Triple C Ranch and I think it's time for us to literally hit the trail. 
from deer hunting and fishing to accommodation, the ranch offers everything you need for an unforgettable stay. Book your stay today and discover the rugged beauty of Triple C Ranch. A community-run grocery store isn't a commodity everyone has access to, and its creation often stems from a singular vision coupled with the collective determination of a community. Let's join field correspondent Shan Stow at Miss Sally's Market in Gainesboro as we delve into this grassroots endeavor. From farm to table, from tradition to the next generation, Miss Sally's Market thrives on connection. This market is a tribute to tradition, supporting local farmers. We are in downtown Gainesboro, Tennessee, in a charming and wonderful place. I'm at Miss Sally's Market, and I have with me here the owner, Natasha Dean, and a surprise guest. Hello, Natasha. Welcome to Miss Sally's Market. What she's doing here in this place for this community is amazing. You've taken on this massive project and how is it impacting the community? One of the things we noticed about Jackson County that really fascinated me is that there are homesteaders who do everything themselves on their land. They, they grow their vegetables, they raise their own meat. And then you have folks who don't have the time to do that. The goodness is all around us and there are people who need it and they need it conveniently. And so the idea was to put those two things together. You not only have wonderful, healthy groceries here, but they also have meals that you can take home with you. So you have a full kitchen where you're cooking items. And you had uh, this one customer who, he was what, a single man and he simply wanted one item. Cornbread. Cornbread. <laughs> Said I don't, ever since my mama died, I haven't been able to get cornbread and I don't know how to cook it. And if, would you, if you would just carry cornbread, I would be, so grateful. And speaking of people, we have a special guest here. Let's introduce uh, our amazing farmer. This is Lucas Brown. Hi, Lucas. Hi. <laughs> Lucas raises pigs here just outside of Gainesboro. And you were the first uh, business owner, first farmer to get on board with Miss Sally's, is that right? Yeah, we saw a Facebook post. The, the market was brewing that it was gonna be a thing. And uh, we immediately thought, we wanna be part of that. Um, this looks really awesome vision that Natasha had um, early on, you know, just from early Facebook post days was, you know, this is going to be a lot of organic, a lot of local, uh, a lot of uh, nutrient dense food that maybe isn't available within the county or wasn't available. And uh, we were just, we're all about that anyway, uh, at Redbud Ridge, we're all about tending and keeping, really working with the earth uh, to you know, feed people good, healthy food. I appreciate what you're doing here and the accessibility to Gainesboro and the whole region. Now, you brought some other guests today. I'd like to hear some stories about maybe some of your other vendors, other products, that sort of thing. So uh, let's take a look. We have Tammy Tucker of Nanny Tea's Salsa, and I hear you have five-star reviews here at Miss Sally's. So tell me a little bit about how the two of you collaborated together. And as I understand it, this is exclusive to Miss Sally's Market. It is. <laughs> Natasha approached me uh, a couple of years ago with the idea of Miss Sally's Market. And uh, she found out that I made salsa and wanted me to uh, create the salsa that she would be able to sell in Miss Sally's Market. Natasha insisted on I have a name for my product. <laughs> and since I do have five grandchildren and my name is Nanny. So you are Nanny T. I am. That's me. <laughs> You'll yes. have to autograph my salsa okay. after, after this episode. Thank you for your contribution to Miss Sally's. Yeah. <laughs> You're your so salsa. welcome. Okay, today is obviously Support Your Local Farmer Day because we have yet another farmer, and this time in the produce fields, Liz Babb. Hi, Liz. Hi. <laughs> now, you wear multiple hats. You wear the farm hat, you wear the chef hat here at Miss Sally's. So tell us a little bit about how this relationship got started and uh, you're bringing uh, the produce, vegetables, all that good stuff here, but you're also working in the kitchen. That's right. We make fresh meals. Um, Tuesday, Wednesday, every week. 
for people to take home and eat. Um, we change them up weekly. From the easy meals to the complicated meals that you just stick in the oven and have food for your family, this is a wonderful resource. Liz is modest too, but I want to mention a couple of her special recipes. Our bacon pimento cheese is very <laughs> popular. She did um, spinach and artichoke enchiladas last week that were amazing. And this week and last week, she did a beet carrot ginger juice that is flying off the shelf. Liz so is obviously holding out on us. <laughs> All right, now there you have it. Now you know where to go for all your wonderful produce, vegetables, cake and bake items, and uh, I'm going to stop by the salad bar here before I leave. Whether you're dropping by for a crisp, locally sourced salad or gathering ingredients for a home-cooked feast, Miss Sally's Market is the ultimate stop for all your culinary needs. Whether you're seeking a sensational live performance or planning your next memorable event, look no further than the Harvester Event Center in downtown Smithville. Thank you for joining us on our journey through Tennessee's Upper Cumberland. Until we meet again, continue exploring and uncovering the Upper Cumberland's hidden marvels. Farewell for now. Wish you were here. Here we go. Let's do it. I'm not not waiting for the heater to go off. We really are waiting for the <laughs> Roll for initiative. <laughs> How serious did I seem? <laughs> Wish You Were Here, produced under an agreement with the Upper Cumberland Development District and made possible in part through support from the Tennessee Tech University Center for Rural Innovation and the Tennessee Department of Tourist Development. This program was made possible by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.